Hello, I'm Manuel Tos, and today we're going to do something with MS Paint. Now, uh, for some background before I start, I'm just going to say that recently it's been some holidays as well as, uh, as, as some might know, I work uh, with taxes. So, of course, that means that uh, in the U.S. currently we're approaching the deadline for... Uh, the income tax returns which is on the 18th so I've been very busy with both that and the holidays being around so uh, I've decided to make this video to tide you over until I can actually make the 0 AD replay because I know that if I make it it might not be uploaded right away so I decided to make a video that requires a smaller file size in order to do that so today what I'm actually going to t to be talking about is the migration period and how uh, the territory was divided up uh, of the Roman Empire uh, at, especially the Western Roman Empire at the end well, not the end, at its end, when the migration period occurred. And I'm going to be talking a little bit about that history. Now, of course, let me just say, most of what I'm saying is right off the top of my head. I haven't actually uh, done any research right now. I mean, I've, I've done research in the past on this stuff. So if I do make a mistake, then I recommend that you uh, do call me out on it and... Uh, correct me and if that happens I'll put it in the description and if I make a whole bunch of mistakes then I'll make another video to uh, make up for it so anyway I'm going to start by drawing a bit of a map of uh, Europe and parts of Africa and parts of Asia maybe so we'll just l let me just say for those of you who aren't aware I'm not the best at drawing with, uh, what should I call it, with a mouse. So yeah, that's the mount. Uh, I think I'm I'm a lot too far over in this direction than I'd be than I'd rather be. But so uh, we're just going to assume that the northern coast of Africa is very flat, although it isn't. But uh, for the purposes of this video, we're just going to assume for a minute that it is. Okay, so now we're going to get uh, Anatolia. Yep, <laughs> Anatolia definitely. Uh, that's a that's a very square, very square Black Sea. Uh, there's Crimea, everybody's favorite. Uh, let me, uh, oh well, ah, th that's not good. That's not good. That's not good at all. Let me start over. I'm actually going to do Iberia, the one in Europe, of course, first. So there's Galicia. There's there's what we call today Portugal and Gibraltar somewhere in there. And there's Valencia, Barcelona, all that stuff. Uh, it's a little point where it goes down a bit, but then it goes up again into Liguria. Then it goes a bit diagonal. There's Toscana and uh, Lazio, and uh, let's get Calabria, Puglia. <laughs> Just naming all the various parts of Italy. The Adriatic Sea. Uh, I, I, mean, I don't feel like drawing Venice. going to go in like that there's the Peloponnesus not the best one uh, there's Athens and going to go up a bit there's that bit eh. Eh. <laughs> why, why did I draw that uh, and bam bam I think there's a bit in the Black Sea that gets a bit thick, and let's just smooth it out. Who cares? Well, I, I actually <laughs> am I'm getting very triggered by what I'm doing right here, but I'm just going to make the Sea of Marmara really big. 
Uh, there's Anatolia. Okay, we're going to have a very stubby Levant. We're going to have a very collapsed... Uh, a very collapsed Mediterranean and we'll just pretend like it looks like there's Gibraltar and it goes down into Morocco okay and the Bay of Biscay let's round it out Brittany is up there and this thing is another there's it's Normandy and there's the Netherlands and there's Jutland up there. It's uh, jutting quite heavily. There's Pomerania, Prussia, uh, and the Baltic. And Sweden and Norway up there. And and we'll draw over stuff when we get to it. Okay, so the East Roman Empire is over here of course, uh, in, in this bit. And the Western Roman Empire was over there. So we're in maybe the... Well, let's just say that we're, we're playing it loose. We're going to be talking about a wide range of time of times. So when the actual... Generally, when they say that the Roman Empire fell, it's... Let me see if I can make a river. Uh, let's get uh, Rhine... Uh, it curves that way and the Danube is somewhere over here goes through there goes up there and, uh, somewhere in there and then the Rhone is up there and then there's there's another important river that goes like that that divides Aquitaine okay I, I can't do all the rivers but I do have to do the Nile. There you go. Okay, so the Roman Empire was collapsing, but it didn't collapse right away. It collapsed over a really extended period of time. So in the sense that a lot of uh, Germanic tribes were moving, not necessarily Germanic, some of them weren't, were moving into parts of the Roman Empire, and they became federati, which means... Uh, Federates, people that were federate with the Romans, they were allowed to have certain bits of land, but they also had responsibilities for having it. So it's in, in a way similar to feudalism, but not exactly. And so they started carving up the empire. So I'm going to use, let's say, a green for Germanic tribes. And we're going to put... Oh, that's a huge font. Century Gothic, very fitting font for the type of thing we're doing here. Oh my goodness! There you go. Let's let's go small, really small. Uh, maybe that's a little bit too small. Let's let's go twelve point, and you can't go wrong with twelve point. So around here, straddling the Rhine, you've got the Franks, and the Franks were divided between the uh, Ripuarian Franks and the Salian Franks. So they're fine, I guess. And up here you had the Frisians, who, uh, by the way, still exist today to some extent. Uh, although today it's usually what they call the people on the islands that are just off the coast, although there are some inland bits as well. So the Frisians were on the coast, the Franks were more straddling the Rhine up here. And below them, the, the Franks were the Swabians, who, or more accurately for the time period, they would be called the Alamanni, who were more toward uh, Switzerland and Swabia and uh, the Elsass, which is over here. And um, let's do red for Romans. And when the Roman, the Western Roman Empire collapsed, the area uh, surrounding the town of Soissons it was uh, ruled by 
a uh, Roman general known as Siagrius, who held control in that area. And I'm going to use a brown here for, uh, uh, let's say, should I write Armorica? Okay, Brittany. I'll, I'll just say Brittany on here. And I'll use a brown for other things as well. So anyway, the Franks crossed the Rhine a bit and became Federati. The Alemanni, I don't know if they were Federati or not. Um, Rome itself had been taken over by uh, Odoacer, who was a military leader who had taken over Rome. Now, how did Rome fall is a question you may ask. Um, and the answer, of course, is that it it had to do with corruption and the because in its later days rome was sort of ping-ponging between being under the control of its military leaders such as odoacer or being a puppet state to the eastern roman empire now it's important to also uh, make the important uh, notice to notice it's important to notice that the that uh, technically speaking it was still one roman empire even though it had two emperors with two separate governments uh, as a state it still was considered one state and that's a very important distinction to make because it really describes because even after uh, Romulus Augustulus and uh, Julius Nepos, who I might actually going to put here, were deposed as Roman emperors. The um, the emperor in Constantinople was considered as the only Roman emperor. He wasn't considered as the Greek emperor, at least uh, not commonly in those days. And, of course, the, uh, I'm, I'm getting really silent, I don't know why. I'm, my brain, I mean, maybe I'm, maybe it's because I'm writing while I'm speaking, that could be it, but the, technically speaking, the Western Roman Empire never really existed as a as an individual state in the sense that it was technically all one state that had two governments uh, an eastern government and a western government and that occasionally would become one government and split up and sometimes it would have more than two it all depended on a number of different factors so in essence to say the western roman Empire empire fell is not a very accurate term because it technically did not fall in the general sense that nations fall okay so up here is maybe austria so i'm going to put the rugi i believe were there at that time and Ostrogoths were more over here. And I'm going to put the Jepids here, even though they may not have become independent at this time. And the Burgundians. And I'm going to talk about all these groups a bit later. And the Visigoths. I'm going to put them sort of up here because they 
the core territory was more up in this direction until later when, when they were forced to move a bit. And uh, Swibby. Oh, gotta spell it right. Vandals. And Allen's. And I'm going to put Vasconians. Okay. I, I think that's. Uh, and uh, let's put Longobardi up here. Or Lombards to be simpler. There are more up here. I don't think. I think they already crossed. I may not have put the Danube in the exact right place. So I'm just going to squash them in. And I'm also going to put Huns. Slavs up there, somewhere. Slavs, they're somewhere. At this point in history, they exist, but they're not in in very specific places. And let's put Saxons. Let's just put all the stem tribes. Saxons. All right. And we're also going to put. And, and the Lombards were in the same area as the Rugi are on this map. Not not the Lombards, the the Bavarians, the ancestors of the Bavarians. Yeah. So anyway, let's get right to it. Okay, the Goths and the Visigoths came from around this area. Uh, that is today the area from around Romania to Ukraine and uh, there were Crimean Goths as well that inhabited Crimea for a significant time in history and the Goths are believed to have originally migrated from Scandinavia so let, let me put in a lighter color and there we go Goths went from uh, Scandinavia onto the mainland of Europe, then traveled across here, becoming the and their material culture, uh, as well as the material culture of other people living in the area, was known as the Chernyakov culture to ar archaeologists today because they wouldn't have called that that back in those days and then the Goths traveled into the Roman Empire okay now it's important to know that the Visigoths and Ostrogoths as well as the Crimean Goths aren't the only Gothic uh, culture cultural group because the Jepids were believed to be closely related to the Goths the Lombards are believed to have maybe come across from Scandinavia as well, um, and the Geats as well as the Goots are probably closely related to the Goths as well. So, and there's other groups, but uh, those are the main ones. So, also another thing to note is the Burgundians. The Burgundians are believed to have originally come from up here where the Thuringians are on this map and have moved down into what uh, is historically called Burgundy and the Burgundians were probably moved possibly as a result of the invasion of the Huns because the Huns are known to have invaded and really pushed into the Roman Empire and of course that actually is one of the main causes of the migration period it's the Huns coming in 
and people running from the Huns, and they try to take refuge in the Roman Empire. And we know that even some Sarmatians took refuge in the Roman Empire generations before the Huns came, when I think the Goths did some expansion in the region, and the Marcomannic Wars were occurring during that time. Um, additionally, the Alans are originally from the from I think just north of the Caucasus. Let's uh, actually get the Caucasus on the map. Let's make this the Caspian Sea. So the Alans are from somewhere in here, and they traveled into Europe. Well, this technically is also part of Europe, but they traveled and eventually they traveled together with the Vandals into Iberia along with the Suebi and other groups as well. And instead of staying in Iberia like the Suebi, they decided to move across and rule Africa. And their rule of Africa well, the Roman provinces, the Roman province of Africa, as well as Mediterranean islands. Uh, they were a significant threat to Rome, seeing as during this time, the Roman province of Africa was actually very important agriculturally. Uh, surprise, surprise. And the Suebi, I think they're closely related to the Alamanni, or at least uh, have a common ancestry. Because the Swabi, the Alamani are also can also be called uh, Swabi in its different sense. They're the ancestors of the Swabians, uh, the Schwaben, as it is in German, and the Swabi are d located generally in uh, what today is Galicia, although they also expanded into su more southern regions but were rejected by the Visigoths who then decided to expand and really take a lot of the territory. So actually now let's uh, draw some borders. So Brittany is there. The, the Bretons are believed to have crossed from Great Britain which uh, will now appear on our map you'll see my uh, poor skills of drawing Britain uh, uh, Scotland doesn't matter too much for this map okay there's Wales so that's, that's a bit of fat Wales although if I do say so myself fat neck Britain <laughs> uh -huh. okay and Britain was, of course, ruled by the Britons, who, although culturally receiving a lot of Roman culture over many centuries, not that many centuries, they still remained uh, uniquely separate from the Romans. And the reason Britain uh, left the Roman Empire is because some... Uh, a man named Constantine declared himself Roman Emperor in Britain and tried to expand his power into the rest of the empire, but he lost and no emperor afterwards re-established uh, rule in Britain and eventually what was left of the government decided to go its own way and uh, this is, of course, the time during which uh, the legend of Arthur would have been set uh, when, in after the fall of, uh, after the collapse of Roman authority in Britain, but uh, before the splintering of the local authority, although it may already have splintered. It, it's a very obscure period in history because there's just so many few... Uh, bits of literature from that exact period, the migration period, when a lot of people, uh, so especially the Saxons and uh, and some other groups, migrated into into Britain and really tried to conquer it. As later, some from 
Scandinavia would attempt to do. So it really was a, a very interesting period in history because so many things changed. Now, the Franks ruled in this area that uh, you could say is a bit cross-shaped. That's generally how I'd like to describe their territory. It's a bit cross-shaped, and traditionally it's called Austrasia, which uh, means, I think, uh, Eastern land. And that's not called that in these days, of course, but that's after they conquer the lands that were ruled by Siagrius and the Franks expand their authority in that direction. Let me just draw some more borders. Uh, that's the Visigoths. Yeah, they had significant lands. Visconians up here. Swithy in the corner. Uh, the Vandals didn't actually rule too far because uh, in this area down here, Roman authority had collapsed and people from the inlands, the Moors, had taken control of uh, that area that, of course, is later called Morocco in history. And... Of course, the, the Vandals didn't have rule over all these areas. A lot of it was in the Eastern Roman sphere of influence. Now, you might be wondering, who is Julius Nepos? And he's actually a Roman emperor that lost control of Italy and retained control of... Uh, the West Roman Ill Illyria and when or Dalmatia and when Odoacer deposed uh, Romulus Augustus Julius Nepos was actually after that reinstated as the Emperor um, however it's just border Italy here uh, However, um, eventually, Odoacer decided to rule in his own right as the Duke of Italy. But he was kicked out by the Ostrogoths, who actually didn't kick him out. They actually killed him, which uh, I suppose is very un unfortunate for him. And the Ostrogoths ruled over Italy, and they also, uh, under... Theodoric the Great managed to actually have a very large amount of power in the Western Mediterranean, being able to subjugate the Burgundians, the Visigoths, and the Vandals as well. And all the money are in there. Now, the Burgundians, I may have mentioned this earlier, they came from more a central German area, and their war with the Huns and the movement uh, after that is possibly related to the ancient legend of, uh, not not ancient in the sense that it's classical, but the old legend of Siegfried, just like uh, the Geats up here are important in the legend of Beowulf. So the migration period is actually a period where a lot of legends really started when you consider Arthurian legend and uh, Beowulf and Siegfried. Now, of course, you could say that about every era, though. And the Frisians, just to emphasize, really only held mostly areas close to the coast. And the Franks were a bit fat. Now, the area that, Sieg that Siagrius ruled that the Franks then took was uh, named... Uh, Neustria or Neustria, which uh, then expanded the Frankish rule. The Franks then managed to take land from the Visigoths. Uh, most of the land that the Visigoths held in uh, what formerly was known as Gallia, except for the region of Septimania, which is down here. 
and uh, the Jepids were a, Ger a Germanic group who eventually rebelled against the Huns and overthrew them and created a powerful uh, kingdom uh, near the Danube. Now, of course, unfortunately, it is not very well uh, known in history in the sense that we don't actually have that much information on them. Now, of course, the Slavs expanded as well into a lot of these different regions. The exact beginning of the Slavs isn't really known. It's a very postulated thing because the Slavs uh, came after all these people who are already not too well documented. And then the Slavs, uh, the origin of the Slavs is very undocumented. But uh, we know that they must have existed at least uh, during the time of the migration period, if not earlier. In addition to that, um, was there something else I wanted to say? No, I, I think that's actually it. If you want to know more, if you want me to make a researched video where I talk in detail about some of these things, then please write so in the comments below. If you have any corrections to make, then please uh, do so in the comments. And uh, if you upvote those comments, and, and then I'll hopefully see it, and then I can make a correction in my dis video description. In addition to that, uh, if there are significant inaccuracies, then I will make another video in an attempt to correct those things. And uh, thank you all for watching, and I will be seeing you all next time on Ultus Over and Out.